Well, hello, Shoreline Church and friends. Uh, we are coming to our final four Wednesday devotionals on the book of James. Uh, we are going to wrap up chapter five. It's been quite a journey. I hope you've uh, learned, been encouraged. And so today we're looking at James chapter five, verses 14 and 15. And this is in that little section on prayer that we began last Wednesday. So listen to, ver listen to verses 14 and 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let them call on the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. There's a lot in those two little verses. And so just a couple of thoughts. First, I want you just to ponder and recognize the power of prayer. There is power in prayer. Now let's be clear. It's not your power. It's not my power. It's not that we know how to pray so well. It's the power of God that's unleashed through the prayers of God's people. We have to keep that perspective. And so in this passage... There's just a few thoughts that I think we can kind of meditate on today, think about, that I hope will inspire us to pray more, but to pray more with the right heart and the right spirit and the right understanding. First, prayer can unleash God's healing power. I've seen it. I see people pray with faith, trusting in God, and then God, in his, by His hand and in His power, has touched someone and healed them. Uh, prayer doesn't always unleash healing power. Our prayers, if we do them the right way, don't always accomplish exactly what we think they should. But there is something in the prayers of God's people that touch the heart of the living God, and people experience healing power unleashed in prayer. We can celebrate that. Second, there's something about community prayer. It says, go to the elders, go to those who in the church who are mature, who are godly, who have roles of leadership. There is power in praying together. And so don't just pray alone. After our service uh, this, this last Sunday at Shoreline Church, uh, we had, uh, the, after the 11 o'clock service, there were two people on the right uh, to pray, and I think four people on the left available for prayer. 20 minutes later, when my wife and I were talking with people who had made commitments to Jesus, who are wanting to grow in their faith, I looked, and all six of those prayer teams were still praying with people, and those weren't the first people they were praying with. Take advantage of those opportunities when you can pray in community with God's people, because us, our prayers together have impact. So pray in community. Then also we're told to anoint people with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, what is that anointing with oil? That's a picture of the Holy Spirit. I, I've had people ask me, is, is that special oil? I said, nope, it's just oil. <laughs> it's just oil because the power is not in, the, in the, that you know, material item in the oil. The power is in the Spirit of the living God. And in the ancient world, oil was a picture of the presence of the Spirit. And so we understand the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit as we're praying for other people. And then pray in faith. Don't pray saying, ah, it probably won't happen, and I, I don't know if God can really do much, but I'll pray anyways, because I'm supposed to. Pray with confidence. God is powerful. God is loving. God is glorious. Now, we're not in charge of God. We don't raise our fists and say, God, this is what you must do. We come with humility and we ask. But when God answers those prayers, we give Him the glory. Now, a big question, I, I've touched on this already, but a big question, and that is, are we guaranteed, if we pray the right way, healing will happen and our prayers will be answered. There are many people who I would call brothers and sisters in Christ, people who I love and care about, who would say yes. If we pray with enough faith the right way, we always get our prayers answered with a yes. I don't believe that's biblical. I don't believe that's true. I believe that God is sovereign. He's on the throne. We enter in the process with Him. But here's the deal. If someone prays for a sick child or a sick grandchild and they're not healed, and we believe that the right kind of prayer always heals, then we have to also say, you didn't pray the right way, your child remained sick or even died because you didn't pray the right way. That, that is ungodly, that is unbiblical. We have to be very, very careful. So we come with humility, we ask, we know God has power to pray, power to heal and power to work, and He often does, but it's always in His name, for His glory, by His wisdom, not by our demand. And then finally, something very interesting at the end of the passage, uh, it talks about, forgiveness of sins. And, and that's not saying that if we just pray for someone, their sins are forgiven, because the truth is sins are forgiven through Jesus, not through my prayers. But in our prayers, we acknowledge the forgiving power of Jesus. We remind people of the power of Jesus to bring grace because of his life, death, and resurrection. We don't forgive sins, but our prayers can be a reminder of what God has already done through the grace of Jesus Christ. And so we get the joy of partnering with God in prayer. And we can see God do miracles and healing and transform lives and change hearts. Our prayers don't guarantee the change. That's in the hands of our sovereign God. And I'm glad it is. 
because I'm not smart enough to figure that stuff out. Lord Jesus, this is our prayer. We don't raise a fist and tell you what you must do. We don't claim what will be and demand that you do it. We come with humility, O Lord God, acknowledging that you are on the throne, you are all powerful, you spoke and the heavens and the earth came into existence. You can do all things. So when you answer our prayers in the affirmative, we will give you praise. And when you answer our prayers with a wait, we'll be patient. And when you answer our prayer with a no, we will trust that you are on the throne, you are sovereign, and we place our confidence in you. Grow our prayers, grow our faith, and let us see the great things you can do in accordance to your will. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I know this morning's devotional was a little bit longer than usual, but this is an important passage. I hope it's spoken to your heart. Have a great day. We gather this coming Sunday at 9 o'clock in the 11 Shoreline Church on campus online. I hope to see you there.